What's going on beautiful people? It's Jerry Travis Smith and I'm back with you again because Microsoft has decided that it is going to remove the bypasses that we've been using so that you don't have to sign in with a Microsoft account when you install Windows 11. And those include both this one, the OOBE backslash bypass NRO, and they got rid of that in one of the dev builds a long time ago. Or the other one that's newer, but is actually a lot easier, start space ms hyphen cxh colon local only. Both of these no longer work in the dev build, and it's just a matter of time before they push this out to the general public in the release builds. So I'm going to show you using the help of some very smart people how to reliably get around this and as an added bonus it turns out this method allows me to easily bypass TPM 2.0 requirements and all the hardware requirements shenanigans that for those of you that have followed my channel you know that we've been working on different ways to get around that for a couple of years now. So Without further ado, let me show you how to do it. We're going to start out creating our installation media as we've always done. So I'm just going to type download Windows 11. And you could just as easily use Rufus to do this, but I am using Microsoft's media creation tool for this. So we'll download the media creation tool. You can see I have an older version of it already. But we'll get that saved. We'll open it. I have a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive plugged in in an enclosure. So I'll do accept. And it'll sit here and think for a minute. You don't have to touch this unless you want to use a language other than English. Next, I want to use a USB flash drive. Okay, removable drive NVMe, that's me. It will format your drive, so anything that's on that drive, you lose. And as we've done a million times, I'll be back with you when this process gets finished. And we're back, that didn't take long at all. It's sitting at drive G. Now at this point, in every other way that I've showed you how to bypass the TPM 2.0 requirements, we've unmounted our flash drive, taken it to the unsupported PC and I've demonstrated to you that it will indeed work but this time we're going to leave it plugged in and I'll go ahead and leave this up because we're going to uh, need to move a file into here that's going to do some magic for us it's super cool um, I'm going to go back to my browser here and we'll open a new Google tab and I'm going to search for unattended .xml generator And what we're looking for is this shenanigans.de. You gotta love it. Now, I gotta say, this is the coolest thing ever because it basically lets us automate so much of the Windows 11 setup using mechanisms that Microsoft has built right in. And this unattend.xml has been around for at least 20 years, maybe even dating back to Windows 2000. I'm just not sure. Anyway, um, at the top of it is just basic stuff. So pick whatever your language is, pick what your keyboard is, okay? And, and I'll let you on a little secret. When we do the setup, you do not even have to choose that anymore because of this. It's so cool. Scroll down, pick your home location. You could actually lie to it and pick somewhere else. It doesn't really seem to matter. But I'm gonna do Intel AMD 64-bit and look at this magic little thing here. And all this does is create some XML that the Microsoft installer understands that'll turn that off. You can even say allow Windows 11 to be installed without an internet connection. It warns you not to do that, but um, it says if you just wanna create local offline user accounts, you don't need that option. So I'm gonna go down and we'll fill out the user accounts section of the form I don't need the rest of this. I actually do not put my password in on the accounts that we create using this and I set those 
um, whenever we get into our Windows install. That's just a personal choice. That way you don't have to worry about this sensitive file stuff. Okay, and I can pick a computer name without Microsoft having this gobbledygook here. So I'm just going to put uh, no TPM just to be a smarty pants. And a lot of this other stuff, let's see, I can go ahead and set the time zone because it always gets that wrong. So I'm in the Eastern time zone, which is negative five. Now I highly recommend that you do not, unless you know 100% what um, drive letter and all that that you're gonna install Windows on, just leave this on, partition the disk interactively, and I'll show you that when we use this. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down, so not using any of that. Don't need any VB script, but if you're into that kind of thing and have some scripts, you can run it. Uh, I'm just gonna use a generic product key. If you have an actual key, you can actually put it right here. I am gonna do Windows Pro. I didn't know if this would actually let you install home, but I'm gonna do Pro because it allows you to do more customizations. I like this pretty good. It says you can select the image according to the product key, so gonna do that. Or um, if you want to and you've downloaded a certain ISO, you can choose select image with this name, Windows 11 Pro. I'm just gonna do that, let it use the generic key for Pro. So scroll on down a little bit. And this is, you know, letting it handle the PE stage as usual. Gonna not worry about that. Now here's the cool part. Let Windows Setup create the following local offline accounts. Okay, so for the account name here, um, I could make an admin account and a user account. I'm just gonna take this user account out and I'm just gonna make the admin Trav. And most of this other stuff, I'm gonna leave it alone. Now you could go through and set all this, but for the purposes of our example, I'm just gonna leave most of this default, which is what this is set up to do anyway. You can even do some crazy stuff like disable Windows Defender, uh, disable Windows Update, user access control, not gonna do that. Okay. Um, Let's see here, there is one section people may are, there is one section I guarantee people are interested in. If we go on down, there's a section in here for debloat. And what this will do is using Microsoft's own mechanisms, uninstall any of this stuff that you pick. Not doing that. There's some other stuff in here. Not gonna fool with any of that. You get the idea. So we get down to the bottom and I'm gonna download the XML file. It's gonna be called auto unattend.xml by default. And uh, what that's gonna do for us, we don't even have to do anything. Windows setup will automatically pick that up as long as we put it in the right place. So instead of putting it in downloads, I'm gonna go down to my um, bootable media that we just created and click G. Just make sure that you're in the root where all the Microsoft install files live on the drive and save it right here. Okay. Now we can go look at this cause I know some of you probably are like, you know, uh, how do I know there's not viruses or whatever in it? Well, I just don't think there are, but we can look at it in notepad. All it is is a bunch of XML that sets things in windows exactly as we would if we did this ourselves. But who wants to have to, do all that right i trust it enough really smart people have indicated this is safe and that's what they're using this is good enough for me so let's close that now i can eject it so i will uh eject the ssk storage okay i'm gonna unplug it here we're gonna switch over to this um, PC that we got going on. So I've got my flash drive, the big NVMe enclosure that I use all the time that everybody makes fun of me over because I talk about how fast it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in here to this unsupported PC. Spin this monitor around just so I can see 
So let's go ahead and turn this on. This monitor plays up a little bit, so I'll probably have to poke it a few times to get it to look at the HDMI the way that it should. And I'm going to spam F2, actually delete. There we go. Now the monitor's decided to pick up and the capture card's picking up. It looks like I'm spamming delete and I'll spam F2 just for good measure. Those of you who have watched my channel for a while realizes this is a different angle and a different setup than I have used in the past to do this, but I find that this is much more comfortable because the chair I'm using and I am able to record multiple things at the same time because this machine that I'm recording to has Camtasia. But I digress, okay? And do a boot override. That's probably smarter. This part's different for every BIOS. Okay, down here at the bottom in this particular BIOS, I can pick what I want to override with. And uh, we actually want to do this SSK. Now it should be booting from the flash drive. With any luck, we'll see flashy, flashy. And it is. It's working. And this unattended.xml is going to just make this so much faster than it normally would be. And we don't have to do anything. About the only thing it's going to ask us is, let's partition the drive and pick where Windows goes. And I feel like that's just a safety net if you use this on multiple machines. See, we didn't even have to accept the license agreement. That was done for us. <laughs> Look at that. It's just flying through this stuff. Okay, we don't want to bother disk one because that's our installation media. And I flew through that unattend.xml business. But if you really want to look through that, there are so many options in there. That's shenanigans.de. Whoever that guy is, I think his name's Christoph. That's a sharp cat, man. And I thank him for his good work. I'm sure Microsoft probably doesn't like him all that much. But that doesn't really matter. Okay, disk zero is the NVMe. And I'm just going to click next. And there's nothing, uh, you know, new about this part that you all have never seen. It's just going to start installing Windows 11. When it gets done with this part, I'll be back and it should have rebooted. It's going through some more install stuff. Remember, this old gal is a dual core. Pretty slow. So we'll be back when it gets done with this part. We're actually installing on an old school SATA 3 SSD. And man, NVMe drives really spoil you when it comes to installing software, Windows, name it. It will check for updates. And if it finds them, you'll be here for a while. I do have this machine plugged into the internet. That's another thing I wanted to point out that I didn't mention earlier. Because some of the older skips, you had to have it unplugged from the internet. But this time we don't. So we might be here for a while. This part does take a bit if it finds some updates. And you saw that we just created this installation media. <laughs> Sit back and relax while the magic happens. Yeah, the magic is having to come up with workarounds to get past all this foolishness. Getting things ready for you. Thank you. Yes, uh, you're very welcome for my patience. That's new. I haven't seen that one. So we've made it in to Windows. And I did not edit out anything. That auto unattend.xml. I mean, it didn't ask us nothing after we partitioned that drive and click next. And I should be logged in with this Trav account. My keyboard is acting kind of screwy. There it is. That's the Trav account. It's an admin account. 
is we'll do control alt delete and we'll change a password because we did not have a password set so we'll click and put in the new password there we go so the old password's empty I changed the new password okay and I can go check the activation status of Windows 11 but I'm pretty sure that it will not be activated unless Microsoft actually does the activation based on the hardware like they used to. Oh, it is activated because this machine did have um, Windows 11 Pro, a licensed copy on it at one time. So that is 100% proof to me that it doesn't tie it to a Microsoft account. Because we haven't logged into a Microsoft account with this install whatsoever. So I've learned something doing this demo. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like. And if you really like this kind of content where I show in a very step-by-step -step manner how to do certain workarounds and whatnot, I would appreciate a subscribe. I'm thankful for everybody that watches my channel. If you would like in the comments, please tell me where you're from. I'm from a little tiny place in southeastern Kentucky. And it's amazing to me that people from all over the world have found my videos helpful. And I'm not the only one that does this kind of content. But something about the way that I do it appeals to a certain demographic. So you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you in the next video.